Hey anime fans, welcome to our channel Anime Rewind. In today's video, we are going to recap a 2013 anime movie named Short Piece. So without wasting any more time, let's get to the video. The movie starts with a girl who kneels in front of a shrine. Behind her, a rabbit walks into the shrine. The girl asks the rabbit if she can follow it, and the rabbit says that she can. The girl follows the rabbit and finds herself in front of a door. She asks the rabbit if she can come in, and it says that she can. When she goes into the shrine, she finds a magic door. She stands by the door, and then the rabbit pulls her in. As soon as she walks into the shrine, the atmosphere changes completely. Each time, she will go through a change that takes her to a different realm in the same shrine. After the girl's story, the movie splits into four parts. The possession is the first of these four parts. A young traveler gets caught in a storm and rain. As the storm gets closer, he finds a hut that he didn't know was a shrine. He goes in, hoping to find shelter, and tells the invisible being in the shrine that he needs shelter until the next day. As the storm starts, he sits in the shrine. He finds himself in a different world all of a sudden. He sees himself in a new world, and as he wonders what he is doing there, the room changes into a room full of different umbrellas. He stands there, and out of the umbrella comes a god. God sings while holding his broken umbrella. The man admires the umbrellas and says that he can fix them. When he opens a drawer, he finds the umbrella fixing tools. He fixes everyone's umbrellas, including the gods. God walks into a wall after receiving his umbrella back. The man goes through a door next to where the god went. He goes to another realm. A female god complains about torn wrappers on this realm's wall. She says people have thrown away her beautiful wrappers and her too. Man sees many wrappers. He fixes them. He pulls out needles and thread. He sews all of the wrappers together and then goes to the god on the wall. He says he's on vacation and stumbled upon them. He implores her to let him leave safely. He opens the door forcefully when he sees another knob. When he enters another room, dirty, worn out things fall on him. He has trouble getting up. As he does this, the things start to form a god. The man covers his nose in disgust, as the god gives off a bad smell. When he tells the gods he wants to go home, the gods come after him. He gets down on his knees and thanks all the gods he met at the shrine. Then he closes his eyes as the god comes over him. He awakens in the shrine where he slept. After the storm, he leaves the shrine and finds his hat, umbrella, and wrapper. He takes them, looks back at the shrine, and leaves. The movie moves on to a different story, called Combustible. The story of Combustible takes place in old Edo-era Japan, in a village where a disaster has killed more than half of the people who live there. A girl named Awaka lives in a hut. When she goes outside, she calls out for her friend Matsuki. Matsuki comes inside and the two of them play together. They've known each other since they were kids and they like each other. Matsuki becomes a rebellious young man. One night, Awaka and her maid are in their room when they hear noises coming from outside. When they go to see what's going on, they find that it's Matsuki. His father is screaming and calling for him as he sneaks out of the house to meet his friend Taki. After Matsuki escapes, Owaka enters her room. The next day, Owaka listens in on her parents as they talk. They talk about putting her in a marriage with a rich aristocrat. She goes back to her room and thinks about her first love, Matsuki, while she thinks about the marriage. In the meantime, Matsuki has gone back home. His father is sick of the things he does, so he tells him that he can't control him anymore. His father tells him that he doesn't belong to him and tells him to leave the house. Matsuki walks into Awaka's compound and tells her that his father has disowned him. Awaka is worried about how they will see each other now that he won't live next door. But Matsuki tells her that he will come to visit her. Three days before the wedding, Awaka sits in her room and looks at the gifts her fiancé bought for her. She is upset as she looks at her kimono. In anger, she throws away a handmade fan, which hits a lantern and breaks it. The hand fan starts a fire, which spreads to her room. Awaka wants to leave and tries to call for help. She opens the door, looks at her kimono, and then closes the door. She doesn't leave the room while it's on fire. Firefighters help the surviving villagers as the village burns. Matsuki, a firefighter, goes to Awaka's burned-down house to find her. On the roof, she's wearing a kimono. He tells her not to walk behind. Because of the fire, she must retreat. Her kimono flies away after she's caught in the fire. In the next scene, called Gambo, a young man named Mr. Samurai gets hurt and falls to the ground. A mysterious white bear named Gambo comes up to him. He thinks that Gambo is a bad bear, so he tells him to kill him. But Gambo just gives him a look and walks away. A big red animal, called an ogre, is making trouble in the village. 
the leader of the village decides that the ogre will leave them alone if they sacrifice females to him every night, since their weapons cannot kill the animal. That night, to take care of the animal, they kill some women. When the ogre wakes up, he kills the girls and hurts the leader of the village. Samurai meets the people who are still alive in the village. The village head tells him that all the women in the village were sacrificed to the ogre, leaving only Ken, the emperor's daughter. The leader of the village begs Samurai to kill the ogre, and in exchange, he will get Ken. Ken is sitting outside the hut. She's sure that the Samurai cannot kill the ogre, so she goes into the bush. She's lying in the grass when she sees Gambo. She initially thinks Gambo will hurt her. Her body won't let her escape. Gambo walks up to her and pets her. She finds out that the bear's name is Gambo, and she gets the feeling that the bear can read her mind. She plays with Gambo, and Samurai stands far away and watches them. Gambo feels sorry for her and decides to fight the ogre. When he goes to the ogre's hideout, he sees a woman who is pregnant with about three of the ogre's children. The woman begs Gambo to kill her because she doesn't want to give birth to the evil inside her. So Gambo sets fire to the hideout, taking the woman and her baby with him. When Gambo jumps out, he runs into the angry ogre who attacks him with all of his strength. Gambo can match the ogre's strength. Ken is hiding out and praying for Gambo to stay alive. Samurai tells her to trust in the power of Gambo and then goes to fight the ogre. The ogre can knock Samurai out with just one kick. Ken comes out of her hiding place. The ogre sees her and sees another chance to have children. He starts to attack her, but Gambo uses his last power to stop him. From behind, he attacks the ogre and they fight. Some soldiers also try to kill the ogre, which they do in the end. When the soldiers ask Ken how she got Gambo to help her, she says that she probably just believes in him. Farewell to Arms was the name of the last short film. It takes place during the Third World War. A group of soldiers, led by Captain Gimlet, are sent to a certain place to fight a robot tank. Junkie, Marl, Jim, and a few others are on this team. When they get there, Junkie steps in their ship, while the others put on their armor and fight. As they walk around, Marl steps on a mine, which explodes, and Junkie tells him that he feels movement. Gimlet tells his group to get into place, so they can attack the robot tank. When they attack for the first time, they think they have destroyed the tank. They keep going on their way. Unfortunately, the tank attacks again, killing everyone except Marl, Gimlet, and one more. Marl's burned protective suit makes them think that they have destroyed the tank. He removes his armor. Gimlet and the last survivor are killed by the tank. The robot says that the island is safe because Marl isn't wearing protective gear or carrying a weapon. Marl throws stones at the leaving robot tank. The robot says Marl isn't a threat, but Marl keeps hitting him, so he strips him. Marl gives Mark a pamphlet, telling him violence and war are unnecessary. As the movie ends, the robot tank walks away. That's all for this video. Hope you have enjoyed watching this video. So, who's your favorite character in the movie? Let me know in the comment section down below. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel so that you'll never miss any updates.